Let's talk about setting the right microphone levels in Jacktrip, right? Uh, when you look at the desktop app here, you know, you can see we have the send slider, we get the studio slider, the monitor slider, and, and note that those are all digital sliders, right? But there's also the audio interface, right? And the analog pre-amplification, right? The gain knobs. And there are some differences here that I want to make sure you understand. Because when you join a Zoom meeting or a Skype call, you don't worry about it, right? It just picks up the microphone, it automatically levels all of that out. But at Jacktrip, you know, the audio quality is higher, you know, we, we don't apply that much processing, which is the whole idea. So you need to know a little bit about how to handle pre-amplification versus these digital sliders. So uh, to break it down, an external interface, an audio interface, is essentially a analog to digital and digital to analog converter, right? What does that mean? Uh, you have a microphone that you plug in, it has basically analog voltage, very, very small voltage, and you want to amplify that in order to digitalize it, right? It's an analog to digital converter. Could also be your guitar line input that you plug into your audio interface, um, but it gets digitized. And the same way, you know, if you plug in your headphones to your audio interface, it now takes the digital uh, audio waveform that you output to that audio interface and it makes it analog so you can actually hear it on your headphones. And there's a difference between making something louder or quieter digitally, like with one of these sliders, which is where you can basically just make whatever you have louder or quieter. It's a simple multiplication of, of the signal. Um, but with the analog, it gets more interesting. Depending on the amplification that I set on my audio interface, right? Uh, it gets more sensitive or less sensitive. So let's take a look at a classic audio interface here, right? We got the Scarlett 2i2, um, relatively affordable, small, two input, two output uh, audio interface. And if I have it turned all the way down, in other words, I don't really amplify a lot, then I won't be able to hear my voice as much in what it picks up if I recorded this. Uh, and if I turn it up digitally then, I get a lot of noise, right? Every analog uh, piece of equipment, of audio equipment, has a noise floor. And they try to make that noise floor really low. But even if it's at minus 96 dB, you know, and I don't have a lot of preamplification, so my voice is also really low, then I can only make it digitally louder afterwards by also raising the noise floor. So we want to have a good ratio of my signal to the noise floor that inherently happens with every microphone, you know, audio interface, whatever instrument I have plugged in. So I want to make sure that I set the right gain levels in the beginning. And that's the first thing I always think about when joining a jack trip session is I want to make sure that I have enough headroom, but also I'm loud enough um, so that the microphone, you know, has a decent signal to noise ratio. Um, I just mentioned headroom. What is headroom? Well, we don't want to, you know, over gain our microphone because if uh, I say something really loudly on an already very, very sensitive microphone, then digital clipping can occur, which is essentially, you know, the microphone saying, okay, you know, we picked up something super loud here, but you've already gained me so much, I I'm reaching my limit here. So everything, every waveform that goes beyond the scope of what I can record, I'm just gonna clip that and it, it will sound horrible. You know, that's called digital distortion. Um, we don't want digital distortion, but we want to give enough amplification. So what I recommend to get a little bit more concrete here is before you play with any of these sliders here, if you, you know, have your, amp your um, audio interface ready, make sure that you turn the gain knob. Here's another example of what this gain knob can look like. You can see, for example, here, I'm in the yellow right now, right? I'm almost, I'm almost at the, the red uh, when I speak very loudly. So I might even want to turn myself down a little bit more. But essentially we want to be in the yellow area, right? Because that means we have a decent amount of signal coming in, right? It's picking up enough of my voice here. But if I say something really loud, it gets into the red, but it doesn't actually clip yet. So I don't want to do this to any of us, but if I scream now, it would actually go up all the way to the red and it would indicate clipping by actually lighting up this little LED here which is just a means to signal to you, right, to our users, hey, you might want to turn down your, your pre-amplification a little bit. And so before you join a studio, you might actually want to say something really loud or you might want to play a super loud part, you know, just to set your maximum levels here to make sure that 
um, you are in the right ballpark when it comes to your pre-amplification. Pre excuse me. By the way, if you have connected your vocal microphone to input number one and your guitar to input number two, now of course you need to make sure that you tweak them both individually, you know, depending on how loud these signals get. So you might want to start by saying something and then you play the guitar and you, you check your levels here, but you never use any of these sliders yet. And that brings me to step number two, which is what can you do then with these digital sliders here? So let's take a look at the desktop app here, right? You can see that my send slider was all the way up just so I can see how I pre-gain my microphone. But if I turn this down, now all of a sudden I seem to be sending less to the studio. And that's absolutely what it does. This is kind of like the pre-amplification, but now it's digital. You know, if I've already set my gain levels and I don't want to touch my interface anymore, but everyone else says that I'm a little bit loud, you know, I can use this to make myself a little bit quieter. So let's just say I leave this around here. Um, what are these other two sliders? Well, studio is how loudly you hear other participants, right? This is essentially what is coming back from the studio, right? How loud am I hearing everybody else, essentially? So if I got my headphones on here, uh, you know, I might actually use my audio interface, which has a big output button to determine how loud I hear everything through JackTrip. And again, that's what I would want you to think and do as well is we already have these controls on our audio interface. We don't really need this, but let's just say your audio interface is somewhere else, right? You can now digitally turn down your JackTrip studio loudness as well. Um, you can see, by the way, that if I turn this down, my output here is actually not responding, right? Even though I'm, I would now hear everything less loudly from the studio. The reason is just so you can control, you can see if your studio is clipping at all. We want you to keep track of if there's any clipping on the studio. Because, you know, I'm already pretty loudly gained here. Um, and if more people are jamming together, you know, it might add up and actually it might clip here. So then it might make sense to ask everyone to turn down their scent slightly or even turn down the amplification on their audio interface or even go into your soundscape settings, you know, going to studio and visiting your soundscape settings here to um, maybe add a compressor or limiter to your master chain. Let's look at the monitor slider here. Um, this is how loudly you hear yourself. Brings up another interesting point. You know, some audio interfaces, let, let's look at this example here, have this button or even a knob. You know, there's a variety of audio interfaces that call it differently and have different types of buttons, but they already have monitoring included. And the way monitoring works on an audio interface is it basically just says, okay, you can input your microphones or instruments here and how loudly or do you even want me to also output it to the headphones that you connected to this device, right? It stays on the audio interface. It's just a little internal loop where you can decide sometimes even with a knob how loudly you want to hear back what is input into your audio interface. And that's great. You, can, you, you don't have to worry about this monitor slider if you're using uh, a decent you know, audio interface. But we have basically copied the way this works into, into here as well. Uh, I usually turn this all the way down because I use monitoring on my audio interface. But if you turn this up, then this would mean, okay, JackTrip is listening to your input, right? In my case, if I click on the devices menu here, currently my MacBook Pro microphone is selected, but it now listens to my MacBook Pro microphone and it immediately sends it back to my output device. In this case, uh, my audio interface here called Zoom. So essentially, again, you know, the monitor slider here is just the digital representation of what you do on your audio interface as well, if you have that option. There's one last thing I wanna show you. If you click on the studio menu button here, you will see that there are two additional digital sliders, right? One is called Studio Master and one is called Studio Echo. Studio Master is how loud you set the whole studio itself and thus it will affect what everybody hears, right? You can increase the volume of everything that is sent out from the studio to everyone else. Keep in mind that the lower studio button here is just how loud you hear the studio on your end while well, this affects everybody. And then lastly, there's the Studio Echo slider here. The Studio Echo is how loud everybody will hear themselves back from the server. 
Now, note that this is different than monitoring, right? Monitoring is just locally how loud do I hear myself in my headphones when I speak into my microphones or play my instruments. But the studio echo means how loudly does everybody hear themselves back from the studio? Meaning the signal travels to the virtual studio server and then back to everybody else. And I really like this for testing, you know, when I get set up with my microphone, I want to hear how I sound like in comparison to everybody else. I just turn this up and I will hear myself back from the server. And if I'm happy with what I sound like, I just turn it back down because I already use my local monitoring here. I hope this made sense. Um, if you have more questions, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as fast as possible. Thank you.